As hard as he tried back in the 1980s, Detective Roger Rogerson couldn't shake off accusations of corruption. And whispers about his involvement in the assassination attempt of Detective Mick Drury and the murder of whistleblower Sally Ann Huckstep started getting louder. Slowly, police began uncovering evidence pointing to a much darker side to this former star detective. But Roger Rogerson wasn't known as the Dodger for nothing. You don't think the New South Wales Police Force is corrupt? I do not. Do you know a corrupt policeman in the New South Wales Force? I do not. Have you ever known a corrupt policeman? No, I've had no dealings with any corrupt police officer. Do you know who shot Mick Dury? No. Not even a good guess? No, I really don't know who shot Michael Drury. I'd certainly like to know. Roger Rogerson may have beaten bribery charges. Yes, you from today. But whispers surrounding uh, Mick Drury's shooting continued to dog him and the New South Wales police. In response, the Amiga Task Force was set up in 1987, led by Detective Chief Superintendent Doug Kelly. The investigation into Mick Drury's shooting just hadn't been investigated properly. No, it hadn't been. Why was that? I think a lot of people were looking after Roger Rogerson. And uh, it was their, to their discredit that they did. What opinion did you come to form of Mick Drury? Well, I had a, a lot of conversations with Mick and took a lot of statements from him. And I formed the impression that he was a very decent young person, a hard-working detective, and someone that we were quite proud to be, to meet and, and, and to be part of an investigation into his killers, or his attempted killers. And what was your opinion of Roger Rogerson? Not very high. Doug Kelly's team started from scratch. And investigators were rewarded when drug dealer Alan Williams was caught hiding out in the Northern Territory. Williams admitted to instigating the bribery offer to Mick Drury. And when that failed, bankrolling the assassination attempt. Finally, Alan Williams put up the money to $100,000 to, to shoot Mick. The decision was made that, that Mick Drury had to be murdered. He had to be murdered. And this was decided at a meeting in Sydney. It was at a meeting in, in 73 York Street, a restaurant owned by a friend of Rogerson. Attending the meeting was Alan Williams, his friend and hitman Christopher Dale Flannery, and Detective Sergeant Roger Rogerson. Alan Williams paid over $50,000 that night. $45,000 was paid to Rogerson. $5,000 was paid to Flannery. The opposite amounts were to be paid on his death. When you hear this, that must have been a fairly devastating piece of information. Yes, it was. A recognition that there is a police officer on, according to this evidence, there is a police officer prepared to murder another. It was like a soldier taking money from the enemy to kill another officer, to kill another, another soldier. It was a terrible situation and it's probably one of the worst that's, that's been in our history. It's like a terrorist in the camp. Absolutely. The Amiga task force had its second breakthrough when Kath Flannery, wife of hitman Christopher Flannery, admitted her husband had met Roger Rogerson at the Arncliff Scots Club early on the night of the shooting. She told us that Roger pulled up in a police car at Arncliff Scots. On the night of the shooting? On the night of the shooting. During my interview with Roger, he admitted that happened. But of course, he, he didn't admit uh, <laughs> that they went to the mixed place. What did you make of that? Well, it was, high, it was highly valuable evidence as far as we were concerned. It was, a, it was a, a link in a chain. He was the senior detective running around on the night of the shooting with 
a hitman, a man that allegedly killed 12 people. And the very man that Alan, Alan Williams The very man that you. Alan Williams said was part and part of the conspiracy to, to kill Mick. The very man that Alan Williams said he paid. That's right. To assassinate That's right. Mick Drury. That's true. Well, no one put them where the Flannery was involved. But you don't, surely, you didn't drink with Christopher Flannery all the time? No. So it wasn't an unimportant incident? No. Did you know his trade at the time? Everyone knew it was Mr. Rentakill. A cop's been shot. You're having a drink with Mr. Rentakill, and you didn't marry the two? Oh, come on. I don't believe Flannery did it. Why don't you believe Flannery did it? From his reputation, I don't think he would have missed. This was one of the safe places, you thought? Mm. And I was feeding my eldest daughter, who wasn't two years of age at the time, in her high chair. The horror is Flannery would have seen that. Oh, yes. He would have known that there were children inside. Yes. Roger Rogerson would have known there were children inside. Oh, there's no doubt about that. He knew I was a family man with two young children. It, it's six o'clock, he knows you're home. Mm. Six, ten p.m. Married man with two young girls. He was a married man with two young girls. The Amiga task force never got to question Christopher Flannery. He disappeared a year after the Drury shooting. His body never found. You know, Flannery was uh, a long-standing informant. No, no, he was not. No. What are, you, what are your views on what's happened to him? Well... I, I believe that he's dead. Flannery is Any ideas is deceased. or why? I, I have no idea. I can throw no light. In February 1988, after a five-hour interview, Doug Kelly charged Roger Rogerson with conspiracy to murder Mick Drury. And after the, uh, that interview was concluded, he was taken to this uh, establishment and charged with conspiracy to murder our former colleague. It would be the second time Rogerson would face McDrury in court. You must be sick of all this bullshit. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Same yeah. suit, same shoe, same shirt. And this time, McDrury was confident that the evidence of Alan Williams would be enough to put Rogerson away. Alan Williams stood in the Supreme Court in New South Wales, and the indictment was read out to him that Alan Williams conspired with Christopher Dale Flannery and Roger Carlib Rogerson to murder Michael Patrick Drury. And when he was asked how he pleaded, he said he wanted to plead guilty. This was an indictment that carried life imprisonment. But as far as I'm concerned, all we wanted was the truth, and we had the truth. You, you must have thought you had this wrapped up. Very strong case. And uh, we were devastated when, when he was found not guilty. How did that happen? Well, the jury saw fit to, dis to discharge him. Did the judge's direction hinder I think, your case? I think, I think the judge's directions might have been one of the compelling reasons. The judge had indicated that um, uh, Alan Williams was obviously... A drug dealer and... Uh, a liar. A liar. But he pleaded guilty. We can't get over the fact that he pleaded guilty to the charge and was given 12 years. How was Mick Drury when that verdict came down? Well, Mick was devastated. While Rogerson thanked the judge and jury as he was discharged, a distraught Mick Drury was helped from the court by members of the Amiga task force. Mick only had three enemies in the world. He had Alan Williams, the drug dealer that he was part, of, part and parcel of arresting in, uh, in Victoria. Chris Flannery, the, the, the rent, rent a kill killer that allegedly killed about 12 people, and Detective Sergeant Roger Rogerson, then a police officer at, at, at Darlinghurst, but also a protector of drug dealers. 
And uh, despite having beaten those charges, you have no doubt he's a guilty man. No doubt at all. No doubt whatsoever. How difficult was that to see him go free? I do admit it was very difficult. Um, on the one hand, you had Alan Williams. He pleaded guilty to attempting to bribe me. You have Alan Williams. He pleaded guilty to conspiracy to murder me. But the more important principle is that we have a system where a guilty person can be acquitted, but we must never have it where an innocent person is unfairly convicted. But we're dealing with a unique case here in that it was just mind-boggling. People couldn't believe what happened. This was Sydney in the 1980s, not Chicago in the 1920s. How do you feel about that verdict? Well, it was a true verdict, and I'm very much elated. Do you feel justice has been done finally? I, I feel so in regard to this, yes. Do you feel as if you've been... Absolute relief. What do you feel about Mr Drury? I don't wish to make any comments about so subjects such as that. Now, Mr. Rogers, what will you now do? I'm hoping it'll get back to normal again. If Rogerson felt relieved, it wouldn't be for long. He was found to have $110,000 stashed away under false names in two bank accounts. Money he couldn't easily explain. That doesn't fit the image of, a, of an ordinary cop who lives in a fibro house to well, have $100,000 in a bank account. Well, uh, out of that $100,000, at the maximum, $16,000 would be the amount that I'd be entitled to. Who has the rest? Well, the rest is owned by this friend of mine. The and guy it who... came from two sources. That's right, it came from two sources. Uh, one from the sale of the, the motor vehicle, which were payments made to us, and the second was from his winnings. Was it a consolation prize that Roger Rogerson was finally nailed, at least on having money in bank accounts under false names? Yes, it was. It was, it was very satisfying because obviously the money that he had in two false names were obviously drug money. Do you find it unusual that he would have 110,000 plus in two bank accounts? One of the names being Dick Tracy, which it was. What a blatant disregard for the truth and honesty in that regard. Roger Rogerson was jailed for nearly four years for perverting the course of justice. Coming up, Sasha Huxton. He stole my mother from me. What really happened to her mother, Sally Ann? There's a small bone in the back of your throat that had been displaced. And after 32 years, will Mick Drury finally get his justice. There's a couple of matters that I would like to discuss with Roger. That's next on 60 Minutes.